All right, y'all. Today we finna react to she uses other men in front of her husband to give him pleasure. Listen, don't ask where I be finding these videos at. Um, just know that that's what we'll be watching today. Hi all. Today I will tell you about the movie Deep Water. A successful millionaire has to endure the constant betrayal of his beautiful wife, but his patience is ending. In the small town of Little Wesley, in the early morning, a man named Vic is training on his bike. Upon arrival home, Melinda meets him. They have been married for many years and have a daughter, but their marriage is crumbling before our eyes. Melinda lost interest in her husband a long time ago. Vic and Melinda are going to a party. Vic helps Melinda put on her shoes and she confesses her love to him, but Vic doesn't believe her words. At the party, Melinda notices her old friend Joel. They hug and go to have fun together. Vic is watching all this. He understands that Joel and Melinda are not just friends. His friend Mary comes to Vic. She says that all his friends are worried because they understand that Melinda is cheating on him with Joel. But Vic says that Melinda and Joel are just friends, trying to justify his wife. A little later, Joel comes up to Vic to say hello. Joel thanks Vic for letting him date Melinda. He also notes that Vic is not jealous, which Joel really likes. Vic tells him about Melinda's past lover, named Martin, who has gone missing. Vic Wait, wait, hold on, wait, 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 wait. He went up to the husband and saying, thank you for allowing me to date your wife? What the fuck? This is, bro, I'm telling you, it's, it's always the, 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 the billionaires, bro. The billion, bro, the billionaires be doing some weird shit, bro. Like this, I don't understand how you let someone date your wife. Like, what the fuck? Vic says the lover started seeing his wife too often and he killed him. Joel can't believe what he's hearing and asks him not to joke like that. But Vic says he is dead serious. After this, Joel immediately goes home. After the party, Melinda tries to find out from Vic what he and Joel were talking about, but he doesn't answer her question. At home, Vic tells Melinda that she could choose a smarter guy as her lover, but Melinda notices that with Joel she can enjoy herself, and this excites her. Vic is silently jealous, but forgives because he loves and does not want to get a divorce. In the morning, Vic takes his daughter to school, where he meets an acquaintance who already knows what Vic told Joel about Martin's murder. The woman says that half the city already knows about this. Later, Vic meets with his friends. They also discuss rumors about the murder. Friends advise him to calm Melinda down, because she does not even hide the fact that she is cheating. At home, Melinda makes a scandal, because she also found out about the threats against Joel. She says that such things cannot be joked about, and that the missing Martin was her friend. Vic apologizes to her, but she doesn't accept the apology. She says that Joel is leaving town, and she invited him to dinner to apologize. The next day, Joel comes to them for dinner. At the table, Melinda and Vic quarrel again. Melinda wishes Vic to be a normal husband, to which he responds. As if I were normal, I don't think Joel would be over here having dinner with us. I'm about to say a normal husband, bitch. What is wrong with you? What ain't shit? Ain't nothing normal about this shit, bro. You're dating your old. You have a husband, and you're dating your friend from high school. What the? How is that normal? That's see, that's that rich people. Shit. Not, not, it's not all rich people. I'm talking about the billionaires, nigga. This this is some weird shit. They I don't I don't know. I don't, I don't know, bro. But I'm trying to get to the part where he uses other men in front of. Vic puts his daughter to bed while Joel and Melinda spend time together. Melinda goes to the bathroom, leaving Joel alone with Vic. Joel expects an apology, but Vic is not going to do it because he really did kill Martin, specifying that he did it with a hammer. At another party, Vic meets a writer named Don who is looking for new topics for his books. Vic tells a little about himself and that he is now retired, not really wanting to go into details. But Melinda says that Vic made a chip for military drones, helping to blow up people. The writer is surprised by this, and says that this is on the verge of good and evil, saying that Vic is guilty of all murders with the help of such drones. He also remembers the murder of Martin, but Vic doesn't want to discuss it with him. There is tension between them. Later, Vic asks the writer's wife to dance. Melinda is amazed at this. On the way home, Melinda is jealous of Vic, and wants to prove that she is better, but only hurts him. At home, they have a passionate night. The next day, Vic receives a call from the bank, as Melinda Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a, wait a fucking minute, wait, you hurt him how? You hurt him? At home, Melinda is jealous of Vic, and wants to prove that she is better, but only hurts him. At home- <laughs> Well, I guess she ain't better then, huh? Sound like to me, she used teeth. 
<laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. Melinda, you fucking suck at your job. I'm not going to lie. You, you know what I'm saying? Look, I don't get it, bro. You got off by your husband dancing with your, what, what the fuck? What is, this is so, this is so fucked. This relationship is so trash, bro. Why are you dancing with the writer's wife and the wife gets old by you dancing? Are y'all confused as well? Like, is, is this shit on y'all for a loop or is it just me? I, I'm this is not this is weird. At home, they have a passionate night. The next day, Vic receives a call from the bank as Melinda wrote a check in the name of Charlie for piano lessons. Vic decides to find his wife's new lover. He comes to a restaurant where there is live music and meets his wife there. She talks to the pianist. At home, Vic learns that his wife's ex-lover Martin was found shot dead in the forest, and the criminal responsible for this has already been caught. Vic tells Melinda this news, she can't believe this. A few days later, Melinda comes home in the morning, Vic asks her to explain where she has been. This is the first time he raises his voice to her, he says that she behaves like a child and it is unattractive. Melinda tries to anger him even more and tells him the details of the previous night. Vic asks her to stop dating Charlie but she doesn't want to listen to him because she knows that he won't divorce her. Vic says he loves her and asks if she loves him. If you were married to anyone else, be so bored. You'll kill yourself. Melinda invites Charlie to her friend's party and introduces him to Vic. Vic thanks him for the lessons for his wife and wishes him a good evening. In the evening, he sees Charlie. You know what? You know what I realized? This nigga is always in some kind of movie where, where it's some love triangle, bro. Like, let's talk about it. Um, uh, Kissing Booth. Um, Kissing Booth 2. Oh, shit. Kissing Booth fucking 3. What the fuck? It's always some shit with this. Not only that, he was in, uh, oh, what, 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 what love triangle he was in? Uh, Euphoria? He was in fucking Euphoria too. Why this? Why is it always with this nigga? Why is it always that some bitch is cheating on a man? What this nigga? Or he always cheating on his bitch? Like what? The, what why are you in, in, in always some type of love bullshit? The hell? What the fuck? And then you going? He gonna die. I ain't gonna lie. He, he, this nigga right here crazy. He he might actually kill this nigga. I'm not gonna lie. Vic. Vic thanks him for the lessons for his wife and wishes him a good evening. In the evening, he sees Charlie having fun in the pool with Melinda. Vic can't stand such impudence any longer. A little later it starts to rain, and all the guests run into the house, all but Charlie and Vic. The writer notices this. Vic returns to the guests, and together they make cookies. Melinda cannot find Charlie and begins to worry. She goes to the pool. The men dive into the pool and try to save Charlie. Vic starts to provide first aid, but without success, Charlie is dead. The what I tell y'all? What I tell y'all? Bro, Vic, why won't you just divorce the junk, bro? Why won't you just, like, bro, leave her, fool? Like, why are you going through all this trouble getting your hands bloody for a bitch that don't even love you or even want to have sex with you? Like, why just divorce her, bro? The baby going to be all right, bro. You know what I'm saying? Pay some child support. You know, you, you pay child support, nigga. You, you, you're a billionaire. That's like, that's like cheese to you. What are you? Bro, just leave the bitch. The police arrive at the scene and start questioning witnesses. Melinda says Vic is a killer, but no one believes her except the writer. On the way home, Melinda can't contain her emotions and hits Vic. While riding his bike in the morning, Vic notices a gray car with a man sitting inside. The car follows Vic, not even trying to hide. At school, Vic meets the writer's wife. She tells him that her husband invites Melinda to his place to discuss theories about Vic's involvement in the murder. Vic invites the writer and his wife to dinner. Vic takes him to his snail farm and asks him to stop spreading rumors that Vic is guilty of Charlie's murder. But the writer says that Vic must take a lie detector to remove all suspicion. The next day, Vic again notices the gray car. This time it is parked. Looking inside he notices a camera. The car is parked next to the restaurant where Melinda is having lunch with some man. It turns out that this is a psychologist who recently arrived in town. Vic asks for a business card, but the psychologist says he didn't take it with him. Vic realizes that this is a private detective. He goes to the writer and finds out that Don, along with Melinda, hired a detective to keep an eye on Vic. Approaching the house, Vic notices his wife with her new lover. He decides to follow them. In the evening, he overhears a conversation with his wife, who wants to leave for Brazil with a new lover, taking her daughter with her. Vic can't let- This bitch is a whore, Vic. She, like, she, oh my god, she is a hoe. Why are you putting yourself through this? Leave her, bro. Go get you some new buns, bro. Oh, my gosh. You a billionaire. You can have all the buns you want. Let's be honest. 
Can't let that happen. Later, his wife's lover comes to meet Vic. It turns out his name is Tony, and he is a very old friend of Melinda. He talks about how he is building eco-friendly real estate and has a new project in Brazil. Melinda says Tony is doing a very inspiring job. Not like Vic. She also talks about how Tony was her first boyfriend in America. Tony gets embarrassed and says that these are optional details, but Melinda reassures him. He doesn't want to control me like a normal man. Tony says that he understands date Melinda, and what it is like to date Melinda, and sympathizes with Vic. After dinner, Vic once again just watches at Tony. The next day, Vic waits for Tony. You watched your girl get cracked? Bro, this is crazy, bro. Tony near the store and offers to give him a ride to the construction site of the new plot that Melinda has chosen. Tony agrees, but is very surprised why Melinda did not tell him about it in advance. Arriving at the place, Tony tries to find Melinda. At this moment, Vic takes a stone and throws it at his head. Tony is stunned, and Vic throws him off a cliff. He puts a large stone in Tony's pants and tightens it with a belt. He puts another one on Tony's chest, tying his hands with a dog leash. Then he drowned the body in the river in the hope that the stones would not allow it to surface. On the way home, Vic smiles because once again he has allowed his anger to come out. At home, Melinda does not understand why Vic is in such a good mood. She asks if he has seen Tony, to which Vic answers no. On the weekend, they go with the whole family for a picnic to the place where Vic committed the crime. Vic gives his wife an album with her photos, which he secretly took. At the end of the album, she sees the inscription, The Love of My Life. She thanks him for such a wonderful gift. But all the romance is interrupted by their daughter, who came too close to the stream. At this moment, Vic spots Tony's body. On the way home, Melinda says that she forgot her scarf. Vic promises to pick it up tomorrow. In the evening, Vic finds out that Melinda was talking on the phone with the writer. Vic is glad to hear this because he thought that this was another lover, but he forgot that Melinda and the writer suspect him of murder. Melinda asks Vic to go to bed with her. In bed, holding back tears, she says that she loves him. They spend a passionate night together. In the morning, Vic goes to pick up the scarf that Melinda forgot. Meanwhile, Melinda finds Tony's wallet hidden at the snail farm. She starts packing things, but her daughter does not want them to leave. Vic arrives at the place. He tries to hide the body again with a stick, but without success. At that moment, the writer finds him. It turns out that he came to pick up the scarf at Melinda's request. He asks Vic what he's doing in the water and why he needs a stick. It's away. Vic grabs a bike, and the chase begins. But he can't catch up with the car, so he decides to cut through the forest. The writer tries to type a message but accidentally drops the phone. Vic catches up to him but falls right in front of the car. The writer, trying not to run over Vic, leaves the road and flies off a cliff. I ain't even gonna cap, bro. I know it was getting good, but he should've just ran his ass over. That's what I'm gonna say. Vic goes home, where he is met by Melinda, who says that she saw Tony, and then leaves, leaving Vic confused and afraid. What the... Android wants to... Man mistook his girlfriend with twin sister. Yo, I ain't gonna lie, bro. We got a lot to react to uh, this month. I'm not gonna hold y'all. These are seemingly two interesting uh, videos. I don't, I don't know who come up with these video ideas. Just, I don't, I don't get it. I just don't get it. But if you enjoyed the video, man, like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and I catch you on the next video, man. Peace.